Let's make a start by checking the drive belt cover offset from the planar work surface. Now I remove the cover to make a cardboard template. Mark the offset on the cardboard and copy the shape of the cover. Cut it out and it should fit perfectly. Now let's check the overall height of the planer and rip a scrap piece of plywood to the same size. I'm using my template to transfer the shape onto my workpiece so I can then roughly cut it out with a jigsaw. Quick tidy up on my routing table and it fits like a glove. It should also be reasonably square and fairly level. Now I am marking the over length of my new machine and cutting the board to the size. Let's check the width of the planer and move on to making the in-feed and the out-feed table. I'm using melamine board for these, which provides less friction than the standard plywood. I've marked and cut the board to suit the length for the front and the back. So, let's try to determine the size for the inner piece, ideally without using any difficult maths. Well, I think it worked all right. What do you reckon? Measure the height of the table, about half that, and that should be good enough for my fixing holes. So let's drill them out, using the force a bit first, so I can then press in some threaded inserts. And now the assembly of the tables, for which I'm using a Gorilla Glue and my new nail gun. Nothing fancy, but you might want to see my unboxing video later on. It's in the pipeline. So that's my infeed table done. But is it square? Yes, it is. Moving the infeed table to a side. I can now start working on my outfeed table using the same methods. The only difference is that the outfeed table will be permanently fixed to the jointed frame and therefore does not need any backing plate. The outfeed table is now done and is perfectly square. Moving on to a jointed frame for which I'm using two rectangular pieces. These will also provide a support for a fence later on. I'm using a Gorilla Glue and a wood screws for these. Quick wipe off of a squeeze out as I go along, fit a few more screws and it's nearly done. The frame structure should be all square of course. And to prevent the frame tilting forward, I'm also fitting this triangle piece. Now I'm ready to fix the base on, which has been cut to the over length of the jointer. Checking the squareness again. And also if the planer sits in the frame level along its length and across. And it looks like I've made a mistake somewhere, but not to worry, as this can be corrected quite easily using my chisels. No sweat or tears, and it is now level. I'm now making the planer support pillar which will pivot in and out. This is so that the planer can be removed from the frame easily if needed. The pillar base is made out of three triangle pieces which will support the pillar in position. Two of them are fixed with a bolt that acts as a shaft and one pivots along with the pillar. So I'm going to glue on that one first. And again the whole assembly should be square to the base. Let's clamp that in place and fit an eye lock nut. There is another triangle piece that fits at the top. But before I glue it onto the pillar, I'm drilling it out and fitting a threaded insert in it using two-part epoxy glue. The threaded insert will provide a fixing point for a protection blade guard later on. So now it can be glued onto the pillar. To locate my fixing hole precisely, I'm using a screw with one end filed into a sharp point. I screw it into the hole normally used for attaching the side fence 
Then I offer my support pillar into a position and press it on. This will mark my fixing hole on the dot. Let's drill it out then and see where we are. I will now repeat the same process to locate my second fixing hole where the planer mounts on the frame itself. Press the planer against the frame and there we have it. So I can now mount the planer in using two screws and check if the planer is level again. Let's fix the support pillar in two place next. Using my good old Gorilla Glue and two clamps. Just to make sure, I drove in two wood screws as well. With that in place, I can now mount on my outfit table. I carefully level it out with the planar work surface first and then screw it on using four screws. Two from the front and two from the back. Now I set the planar depth of cut to 0.5mm since this is what I use the most. Align my infeed table with the planer and mark for the slots which I then cut out so that the infeed table can move up and down with the depth of cut set on the planer. The table is going to be mounted on using two knobs which is what I'm making next. I'm using a scrap piece of plywood for this and a very sophisticated compass to achieve the perfect round shape. I shape the pieces on my disc sander, smooth it out with a sheet sander, I mark the centers and I drill them out. I then partly drive in the screw and prepare for my two part epoxy glue. Apply the adhesive around the screw head and drive it in flush. And once I've got four of these done, I can mount the infeed table onto the frame. Align it level with the planer and tighten in place. I might as well swap the planer fixing screws for the knobs so the planer can be mounted in and out a lot easier. And once that is sorted, I'm moving on to making the fence. And for that, I'm using two strong triangle pieces cut to 90 degrees and straight plywood board. The fence needs to be squared to the planer and both tables, of course. I have then screwed in this piece to improve the planer stability in the frame and fitted the very important part, which is the blade guard. The guard is shaped to open when a workpiece is passing over the blades and it closes with the help of elastic band as soon as the workpiece has passed. To keep my trigger on, I'll fit a tie wrap. And to keep things safe, I set my jointer onto my table saw against the fence and clamp it down in place. Connect my dust extraction and my jointer to an individually switched socket block which is wired through an emergency stop. Simply hit the stop and the planer shuts down, no messing about. So let's see if this jointer works. For that purpose, I'll be using this scrap piece and I'll be surfacing those two sides. Well, they're not 90 degrees to start with. So let me begin with the widest side. The plane is set 1.5mm cutting depth. Few passes and it's definitely getting flat. Let's do a few more then. Now this side is reasonably flat, I'll put it against the fence and surface the other one. Slowly getting there and it can be noted it's forming a nice sharp edge. Let's do a few more then. 10 minutes run and I'll let you be the judge. If you have enjoyed this video, please like, share or subscribe to my channel.